Your day, this is a book reflection on chapter two and three of The Witness of Charity. Now, similar to the first video of this series, some of the ideas come from myself and some of the ideas come from the book. So I'd like to begin with chapter two. Now in chapter two, it speaks about love as a decision. Likely each of us has experienced puppy love where you really enjoy being in somebody's presence. They make you feel good and your heart kind of races when you're around that person. Now, as time goes on and let's say you are to marry that person, then chances are at a certain point that puppy love is going to disappear. You know, your emotions may be very unsettled and yet you make a choice to love that person. You make a choice to will the best for that person. A good example of, of someone willing the best for other people or somebody making a choice to love other people is Stephen the Martyr. In chapter 7 of the Acts of the Apostles, at the end of the chapter, you know, Stephen is being martyred for his faith, but he prays a prayer that God will not hold these people accountable for Stephen's death. In other words, Stephen wants the best for these people. Stephen is making a choice to love these people. And really, it reflects Jesus on the cross. You know, when Jesus says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they're doing, Jesus also doesn't want these people to be held accountable for his death or to live a life of shame and guilt if they, dis if they discovered who they have put to death and that it was an improper death. He wants them to come to faith. Now I'd like to shift to chapter 3. You know, I could ask a gentleman, you know, what are you going to do today? And the gentleman could answer, oh, I'm going to work today. And then I could say, well, why are you going to work today? It's Saturday. Oh, I'm going to work because I need to provide for my family. And then I could ask, well, how are you going to work? And the gentleman could say, I'm going to sell illegal drugs. Now, we we recognize that all three of these questions need to be answered in positive light for there to be charity or for there to be goodness. And so if I was to ask another gentleman, you know, what are you doing today? He could say, well, I'm going to work. Why are you going to work today? It's Saturday. I'm going to work because I need to provide for my family. And how are you going to work? Oh, I, I work at the hospital as a medical doctor. And so we can see that all of, the, all of these answers are rooted in goodness, rooted in love. Therefore, goodness and love is present. You know, sometimes it's hard to judge. And, and we don't want to judge because who am I to judge? But really what we are judging is not the person, but the action. And so let's just say I witnessed a gentleman selling drugs to a teenager. You know, I could, I could approach the situation and I could point out the gentleman and say, you're a bad person for doing what you're doing. But, but who am I to say that? Like, do I really know the interior of that person? Do I know the person's past history? No. But could I go up to the person and say, the activity that you are doing right now is bad? Of course I could. So really what I'm doing is I'm judging the activity and not the person. And this is really what, what we want to do. And this is also an expression of love because we want the best of others. If somebody's doing something that's not good for them or good for society, then we want to challenge them to be better. And hopefully we're also open to the challenge of others. And so may we continue to grow in love as we journey through this book. And may God bless and keep you.